From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. You couldn't have asked for better weather after to ring in the Year of the Dragon. Tens of thousands of people came out for San Francisco's Chinese New Year Parade. Many times we expect it to be rainy or cold. This year it's just picture perfect. Looking forward to a brand new year and start fresh. The primary is just a little bit over a week away, and San Francisco voters will need to make some big decisions at the polls. This morning, we take a deep dive into Proposition C and what it could mean for the future of the city. Plus, demonstrators here in the Bay Area and all around the world mark two years since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Good morning, and thanks for starting your day with us. Today is Sunday, February 25th. I'm Max Darrow. After weeks of anticipation, the Chinese New Year parade took over San Francisco streets last night. Huge crowds turned out in downtown San Francisco for the largest Lunar New Year parade outside of Asia. The parade kicked off at Market and 2nd Street and snaked 1.3 miles all through the city, past Union Square and through Chinatown. It was all in celebration of the Year of the Dragon, the most popular of the 12 Zodiac animals. Our Da Lin was out in the crowd, soaking in the sights, sounds, and emotions. The Chinese New Year parade started off with a bang. Actually, a lot of bangs to ward off evil spirits and bring in good fortune. Not just the biggest outside of Asia, but perhaps one of the most colorful and loudest parades. Maria Pereira loves it. She's attended almost every single one since 1992. Enjoying a different culture, embracing the traditions, the color, it's just fascinating and uplifting. This year, she brought her kids and her friend's kids. The kiddos were amazed by the sights and sounds. So many dragons. Baby dragon, green-haired dragon, purple dragon, even a glowing wooden dragon. Organizers say the highlight is a 288 feet long golden dragon. Which one was your favorite? I liked the pink one and the purple one. In the Chinese culture, dragon is the most popular of the 12 zodiac animals. Year of the dragon, I feel like it's inspirational, just like looking up at the sky because it's a mythical creature. Prosperity, power, and strength. Majestic, magical, protection. Many hope the new year will bring wealth, success, and good health. A lot of good luck signs and prosperous, and uh, looking forward to a really positive new year. Organizers hope the parade will be one more way to help revitalize downtown San Francisco. After all, the event is a celebration of the Chinese community and its contributions to the city. We're excited to be here and we're excited that it's not pouring rain this year. <laughs> Unlike last year, the nice weather brought out tens of thousands of people to line up along the 1.3 mile route. Organizers say they have 19 floats and 122 groups marching through the city. Everything is so colorful. Each one has their own energy. The school band, the kids, the dancers, the dragon. Aside from the kids, even Maria's English bulldog, Teddy, <laughs> enjoy the action. One more day of festivities. The Community Street Fair will be held in San Francisco Chinatown on Sunday. From my family to yours, Gong Hei Fa Chong, Sunny Pai Long. Da Lin reporting there. A crowd favorite were these little kids in, marching in the parade as mahjong tiles. The little marchers are from Garfield Elementary School. It's a chance for students of all ethnicities to make a cultural connection and get the fun experience of working as a team on a big stage. And it's been an exciting week in Chinatown. Friday night was the annual Miss Chinatown USA pageant that took place at Union Square. It's been held in San Francisco since 1948. One of the co-chairs of the event is Chelsea Hung, a San Francisco native who was crowned Miss SF Chinatown back in 2016. It was just so much nerves, um, but really, it was truly rewarding. Just all the hard work that each contestant and myself have put into this. 
This year's winner was Tara Wong Nash, a UC Berkeley graduate working in nutrition education. And as Dom mentioned, today is the final day of the annual San Francisco Chinese New Year Community Street Fair in Chinatown. And in Oakland, there's another really big event today. That's the Black Joy Parade. Thousands of people are expected to be there for the seventh annual event, which celebrates the Black experience. The founder says she was inspired to create the event during protests for the Occupy and Black Lives Matter movements. That's the only time you saw a lot of us together. It was these like fights and these like against the system and having to be on the front lines of those things like we always are. And I just wanted to have a moment where it wasn't that, that we were like gathered in big group just for celebration. The parade starts right at 1230 at 14th Street and Franklin. The procession will end at 19th and Franklin. And that's where the festival kicks off around two o'clock. Daytime highs today are just like yesterday. Upper 60s off in our East Bay and down into the Santa Clara Valley with a little bit cooler conditions along our coast. But the difference from today and yesterday, well, yesterday was gorgeous, just in time for the Chinese New Year Parade. Today, it's gorgeous too, but we're seeing a lot more clouds roll in from offshore as we're gearing up for some light showers early tomorrow morning. And that could impact the morning commute, especially if you live down in the South Bay. We'll continue to watch showers roll in from offshore into the afternoon hours. Tomorrow, it continues to track off into the East Bay, and then we clear up for Tuesday and Wednesday. Wednesday. Voters in San Francisco will weigh in on a number of ballot measures this year that could help shape the future of the city. One of those measures is Proposition C. If approved, it would waive the transfer tax for properties that are converted from commercial to residential use for the first time. Proponents say this will attract investment, help fill vacant spaces, and help build more housing. But some opponents of Prop C call this a deceptive measure. They argue this will give tax breaks to those who don't need them and don't think it'll build the kind of housing that San Francisco needs. Ice vanilla latte, perfect. We do Jeff Wu owns Il Canto Cafe in downtown San Francisco. Hi there, how you doing? He's had to pivot a lot over the last several years to get enough of a customer base to stay afloat. It's our way to connect with customers, yeah, even though we can't see them. Since the office crowd largely disappeared and hasn't entirely come back. Deliveries are busier. It, it doesn't make up for the foot traffic, though. That's why he likes the sound of Prop C. Right when the pandemic started, one of the first thing I said was, why not convert these to residential apartments? Right now in San Francisco, there's a 6% transfer tax on real estate transactions over $25 million. Proponents of Prop C believe waiving that tax for properties converted from commercial to residential use for the first time will help incentivize developers to convert vacant spaces into housing and therefore bring more people downtown. So far, it sounds pretty good. I mean, we're, we're just a small business here, so for us, it just seems like more foot traffic and it should be pretty helpful. On a walk down California Street with Robbie Silver, the executive director of the Downtown San Francisco Partnership, you can't miss the four lease signs in the windows. Downtown San Francisco is hovering around 35% uh, office vacancy, which, which is not good. He says he will not endorse nor speak out against Prop C. However, he says downtown does need housing and policymakers will need to get creative to make that happen. We have great bones to be able to do that. A mixed use downtown is a vibrant downtown. So what downtown needs as a whole is just an infusion of a uh, residential and housing population. But converting office space into housing isn't a simple task. So you can't just come downtown and wave a magic wand at every um, old or historic building. Um, it has to make sense at the end of the day. It has to make it has to pencil out at the end of the day to be able to convert an office building in, into into residential. That brings us to Justin Dolzel, managing member of Bar Part Time and treasurer of the advocacy group Small Business Forward, not in favor of Prop C. Prop C sounds good in theory. In reality, it's a giveaway to San Franciscans who do not need a giveaway. What they're going to build with that, I'm sure, is more luxury housing, which again, I just don't think the city needs. He and opponents of Prop C believe waiving the transfer tax will actually get in the way of building more affordable housing. Transfer taxes fund extremely valuable social services. They provide money to affordable housing. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been generated by these transfer taxes. So we think they're very vital. And he takes issue with another piece of the proposition. But if this passes, transfer taxes will no longer be the purview of San Francisco voters. Uh, 
it would turn that responsibility over to a simple Board of Supervisors majority. Back downtown. I think we're going to need a little over five minutes. Wu says he has a bit more thinking to do before casting his ballot, but so far, he likes what he hears. I think the more people you bring in, the better. It should help out with rents, too. It should lower rents if there's more uh, availability. A few minutes. Okay. Thank you. He wants to be a part of downtown's future, but a key well, ingredient we'll there is consistency, and finding that will continue to take creativity. San Francisco Mayor London Breed supports Prop C. I asked her about some of the concerns opponents have raised about the measure. One of the things some opponents have of Prop C, they argue that this is giving a tax write-off to billionaires, and they don't think it's going to lead to the kind of housing that San Francisco needs in our housing affordability crisis. What's your response to them? Well, my response is everything isn't about billionaires. And the fact is, San Francisco is, does no longer have the luxury to tax, tax, tax. Our taxes are really expensive here. Um, and in fact, they discourage some of our new businesses and new entrepreneurs from pursuing an opportunity like you know, putting together a group of investors to try and purchase a building, to convert a building to housing and mixed use. We as a city have to do things differently. We have to think about incentivizing rather than penalizing because at the end of the day, the billionaires and the millionaires, they can choose to go do business anywhere. But here in San Francisco, we've never had to work this hard to attract and to retain business. And what that means is we have to make some adjustments. Mayor Breed says this could be a key step in the ongoing effort to revitalize downtown. The primary elections are less than two weeks away, Tuesday, March 5th. Former President Donald Trump won the South Carolina Republican primary, strengthening his position as the front runner for the Republican uh, primary uh, presidential candidate. Uh, Trump defeated his GOP rival, former U.N. Ambassador and South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. Trump has now swept every contest that counted for Republican delegates, adding to previous wins in Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. During his celebration remarks, he said he's never seen the Republican Party as unified as it is right now. Haley vowed to stay in the race. She's winless so far, and since in most states Republicans' delegates are Winner take all, that means Haley gets no credit for her strong second place showings. Her campaign announced a swing through Michigan, Minnesota, Colorado, and Utah that starts today. It's reported she'll also be spending more money on advertising to target Super Tuesday states. It is 6-12 today. Coming up in the next half hour, we'll have a live report with more on the South Carolina primary results right here on KPIX.